Hi, everybody. So I want to introduce you to Anya and Trish. And I met Anya um, in Morocco. So we're kind of part of what you would call the dream team. And we're going to talk about some of that today, but we're going to talk about what Anya is going to be doing next. And Trish is Anya's mother-in-law, and they have been doing things together for years. So they're kind of partnered up in business and spirituality. So we're going to have a conversation about all of that stuff. And I just want to welcome both of you guys to the show. Hi. It's so beautiful to be here. I'm so excited. No, it's yeah. just so wonderful yeah. to have met you and had the connection that we all did, you know, and just that instant energy that me, you, Abby and Antonia had on that journey down there. I don't think I'll ever forget that journey, ever. It was one for the memories. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, we really were able to kind of bring together some really interesting and unique energy. And I feel like that was, for me, the biggest part of that trip was the four of us being able to do so much healing not just for the people there, which I feel like we were able to do a lot of stuff for the people there, but also for the world. Yeah, yeah. definitely for the collective. Like it just felt like the way I've kind of, when I've come back and reflected on it all the way, I've summarized it is it felt like each of us brought a little jigsaw piece. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially like in each different way, you've all taught me so much, but the information that you brought, in terms of like the knowledge and filling so many gaps for me it was like I could stand back for the first time and actually see a picture rather than just getting the fragments and the parts and the energy and the feelings and the emotions and the messages it felt like I actually had a more clearer vision and understanding of why we are here what we're doing why it's been so difficult why there's been setbacks and just understanding the bigger picture and, and then where we navigate this and how we move forward from that you know it's been mm -hmm. I think it's just been so an integral part of my journey to get to this point was to meet you guys on that trip. It has just been fully life-changing. I think the whole retreat has been life-changing for me. Yeah, completely. the whole thing. So we Next. want to thank Mark for that, for putting it together. Ooh, Mark, yeah. love you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but for us, yeah. it was just brilliant, like to meet and to be able to glean new information. And we basically had three seers you know, Anya and I and Abby, and then we had Antonia, which is like, she's like an avenging angel. And we love it, we love you know, it. so that was just a brilliant pairing. And we were able to do so much together because there was all this power, you know, that yeah. came together. I mean, and what a collection of energy, like, like you say, that different energy like input that we all brought you know Abby with a little maternal mother in it you know she with me she was like my little extra mama bear in the desert and always just checking in on everyone looking after everyone and creating such a safe sacred space for people to step into their true power mm -hmm. I feel like you're just like the little true visionary because you just set out this clear path for everyone it's just like oh that makes so much sense you know like for me just it just me clarity that's the biggest thing that you brought to me was just so much clarity on self on uh where the origin of self the understanding of my soul purpose that that, that resonance them callings that I received for so many years it was like translated in in understandable terms in the conscious level mm -hmm. and I think that for me was it just made so much of a difference and then you know understanding the things that Antonio taught us about working against darkness and things like that like a lot of game-changing information was was revealed there and I feel like I just don't know I can't imagine going back to not knowing this information I can't imagine going yeah. back to before Morocco I really can't we all like elevated each other and then that stayed which was brilliant yeah we've held that vibration mm -hmm. it's beautiful yeah it really is. connections with people there that are just maintain and and like you said I feel like on a human level, that's been phenomenal, the connections, the energy, but then on the collective level, the work that was actually done there. I mean, I'll go as far as to say it felt unbelievable sometimes, like what we were doing for me, it felt kind of slightly unrealistic in a human level, but then remembering that feeling of energy, and that's probably not the right word, but it was almost disbelief in the amount that we could get done in such a quick amount of time. Yeah. You know, like 
from working on a level of such small one-to-one small energy to then just expand that to a collective level and to be able to make such a difference on a on a bigger scale in such a short amount of time that's what I struggled to process and once I did I think I realized the impact of that it was it was big it was really big and we were meant to meet so and I think we were meant to help activate all the people that were there and bring just kind of bring them a new I don't know I feel like it's a spark like we created a spark for them um or activated their spark because we all have a spark yes of course and that's the thing I was just going to say like they're they're they kind of the beautiful energy that was created at that camp and that vibration almost allowed me to step into my true power too because they was not judgmental or criticism of me criticizing of me and that kind of welcoming comforting supporting energy yeah, I mean, that was one of the first times I've ever done a big large group like that. And I had people coming up to me saying it was the best meditation session they've ever done. So for me, like that feedback was phenomenal. And having that most beautiful support and I really experienced the beautiful end of that, you know, and I was so grateful for everything that I learned and everything that I took from that on a personal level, but on a collective level as well. And I'm really excited to see what work comes from that and energetic work comes from that with those guys, with, with the group, with Mark. Yeah. Like I'm really yeah. excited to see where connections are built and where that goes naturally, because there were some powerful people out there, powerful people. And what a group of people, like 50 women and, and our Craig, love Craig. Love Craig. <laughs> I loved it. It was awesome. Love Craig. It yeah. was awesome. You know, and having that balance of divine feminine energy. Fucking hell, you know, that flow. That that was what was powerful for me to just sometimes I kind of sat back and I just observed it, you know, a couple of times and thought, wow, this is a powerful experience. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Yeah, it was beautiful. Well, and they were all able to actually be themselves, which a lot of us have not been able to be our true selves in the public, you know, like going to the grocery store or going out to shop or just going to see your friends. You're you haven't been allowed to be your true self. Right. But there everybody was allowed to actually say whatever they wanted and not be judged on it because it was a safe space and everybody pretty much had the same understanding of the way the world works. So it was a beautiful thing to see. It really was. It was like a sacred space of, of understanding. And and it was so true what you just said there, because I didn't, I, I always, I'm very confident as a person, very comfortable, you know, live my life in a very much a flow vibration but then when I got out there, I think I realized how much I had been keeping myself constricted. I don't think I even knew how much. Because then when I wasn't restricting and came back to an environment, even just coming back to the train you came station. Back crying, didn't you? Yeah, like the the drop. It felt like, you know, this yeah. energy drop from from I didn't realise the support the group had created and and the desert and the whole experience, you know, like just being there. When I came back, I felt the vibrational change in this area and and, in the people and in the consciousness. And that is not in any disrespect to anyone in the UK. It's just how I felt, you know, the collective vibration of being with 50 odd people that were on a massive conscious connection with each other, respectful from the heart space, to then come back to such a lower vibrational, (laughs) anger-fueled, horrible energy. I felt it intensely and I felt myself shrink. And then I thought, well, I can't do that. But then how do I be my truest self around this that does not accept that? And that I'm still navigating that. I still don't know, you know. Yeah. I feel like my answer is to move. No. The reason you're there is you're elevating the consciousness there. Both of you guys are. (laughs) So basically, it's just to be yourself, but not necessarily have to feel like you have to voice your opinions every time you go out the door yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't do that anymore we used to i learned that lesson the hard way yeah (laughs) don't do that anymore (laughs) really did got kicked out of family parties and you know all that shebang but it was necessary you know we we literally say this like i look back 
and oh my god I was mental on Facebook I got banned off TikTok banned off everything IP banned you know just fully all my accounts shut down and I wasn't even the worst one I, I don't even think I was that bad I just think I wasn't protecting my technology enough and yeah. you know when I, when I look at the time and I think you know it, it clearly was something within us all the ones that knew you know it was like, I can't just be quiet I can't just be quiet whereas now it's more of a case of choose your battles wisely and choose when and where you want to engage in this energy is it worth your own energy yeah yeah I think that's the most important thing to ask is it worth the time and the effort and the energy it's going to take well During... you want to protect your own energy and make sure your consciousness doesn't drop right but when you see someone that is because really they can get consciousness boost just by standing next to you just by being your neighbor it doesn't oh, you don't need to speak to give out your you know no and this is what I've learned like I've yeah. started this will be a really good one for anyone watching because the main thing I've learned is to kind of obviously using the visualization but we I think we're going about this in the desert so how people see ley lines the way I see them is like water pipes and what I started doing on a bigger scale and energetic level was injecting light from bare feet or hands on the earth or just visually sending it down into like these big water pipes, if you will, that were the ley lines that had the black sticky tar energy pumping around the consciousness and just pump that with pure light vibration so that that activates the ley lines in that whole area that whole sorry that whole vicinity that whole city so that everyone can have more of drip fed light into their consciousness even whilst not being stood next to you, but it's still then absorbing into their dream state, their meditations, or even just into their daily energy. I think that is a really good one that everyone can do by literally just visualizing, sending energy down into these ley line water pipes. I think that works really well. Yeah. And don't just use your own energy. Ask for the oh. energy from the universe oh. to come through you yeah. and go out. Yeah. yeah. So I always like use a plug socket. I think this is great for people to visualize as well. So like a plug coming up and a plug socket from source and then plug that in and then just allow the flow so that anything I always say, anything I use replenish tenfold. So I always make sure I'm not using my own energy. Again, I learned that one the hard way too. You know, we, we learn these lessons so that we can save you guys the, the experience of having to go through that. Right. And the thing is, that's, that's the point in it. We experience sometimes things in years or short times to be able to then find easier ways is to transmute energy and translate things that we can just bypass things that took us years or months to then get through in an hour or 10 minutes yeah well and we're in a window of time where everything's sped up so you can learn all this stuff so much faster than maybe it took for us to learn it because <gasps> yeah. right? we got baby steps like little drip <laughs> oh yeah. just go up there and talk to dead people <laughs> yeah and this road, I feel like when I started with tarot cards I look back now and I think Jesus girl imagine if you knew you was going to be working with the aliens later on like you had no idea yeah. what was coming like oh by the way you're going to end up being a demon slayer in a couple of years just get ready for that one like I would have had no idea and that's why it wasn't ready you know I remember Dolores Cannon saying that if she'd have known where she was going to be at when she started she there's no way she'd have done it and it's the same thing if you'd have told me where I was going I wouldn't have done it you yeah. know, I'd have felt I'm not capable. That's not who I am, you know. And it was only when removing the barriers that I'd created out of pain and self-defense that you call your own personality, by the way. Mm -hmm. When you remove that, that's when I actually seen that there is so much more capability, potential and power underneath. And the sole purpose starts to shine when you get rid of the shit that's blocking yeah, it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we both actually do that for people. So... Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. I'm going to put um, Anya's information down below. And then um, Trish kind of wanted to talk about the waves of volunteers. Did you want to talk about that, Trish? Um, <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I mean, I do understand it a little. But maybe that's a great but, thing yeah, for not, you to give perspective yeah, on not, others. You see, I don't understand the labels of it. Yeah. Which is why I think it's a good thing, because I personally think sometimes in spirituality, specifically in spirituality, in my experience, um, especially when people translate in a science way, that's unknown of, I'm not saying it's wrong, just does not resonate with my person. I've got a dyslexic brain, so it's just no, no good for me. I work mm -hmm. on emotion and energy, and 
I don't like a lot of labels and I don't learn in the same way Trish learns. We learn in different ways. And I think that's what's yeah, so important. Yeah, I trained a lot. I train a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's what's so important so that people can understand. You don't need to understand the labels to be at the level you're at of consciousness, understanding and working with the beings and channeling and getting the visions. You you know, we it were only 10 minutes ago we were showing, explaining the bridges and the healers. Yeah, I did. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, that's me. So it, I think I that's the I understand I'm a healer, honey. And I think, yeah, I do understand the words now. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you want me to jump in? Yeah. So in, okay. in the 50s, they came in. 60s, the, I think. 60s. The, oh, the, the six- weird. Yeah, yeah so the 60s was another opening in time where, like, the good energy was kind of coming in. And that's why everybody wanted to get back to the land. They wanted to love each other, you know that age of Aquarius, it was like a preview. Yeah. But I think it happens every hundred years, just like other things have happened every hundred years. Mm. So there's times that that energy comes back in and it's like, okay, you have another chance to kind of make this work. But this is the ultimate chance. And we are there, we have won. But I see the waves of volunteers as like spiritual soldiers yes that's beautiful so we have come in in waves and the first wave was the scouts so they Mm -hmm. came in to see what does this look like here and then in between that you have the warriors after the scouts and they're here to fight for everybody and to create a safe place and then you have the healers that are here to help heal humanity And, you know, that's the group that I'm in. And then you have bridges in between as well. And after the healers come the builders. So the builders are the ones who are not going to be building buildings. They're going to be building consciousness. Right. So they're going to create the new world from conscious thought. So Mm -hmm. they're the ones who they're not awake yet. Most of them. Um, and the and I think a lot of them are children, right? So we want to say they the kids. Yeah, a lot of them are kids because I think my little sister is definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah. You see it in them because the, the, there's like a gap between them. I feel like there's the older kids that are like nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. They've got a lot of it subconsciously, but they still have the trauma. And then you see the little ones that are like three, four, five. And wow, when you watch them ones as well, like the inner knowing you know I knew this little girl and I'd only just met her and I told her to breathe when she hurt herself and her arms came up above her head and it was like this placement and she I'd never done that before I was looking at her like what the hell how did you know and it was like this inner knowing that is triggered in the second you plant that in a little seed it they don't have to water it and wait for it to go it's like boom reactivated it's like instant reactivation and you can feel their conscious knowing you know there's little girls I know well when I'm looking up at the UFOs they'll be like oh look they're fighting they're having battle and i'm like well, yeah, how do you know this you know and she's, she's like seven years I'm old and they yeah exactly yeah. Honey, what about the autistic children well that's a really good question i think that's a protection so there's two things going on there's chemicals and then yeah. there's protection and it's they're so big they're so bright that they have to have something in between that and the world And I do believe that that will be basically taken care of in the future. They won't have that in between them anymore. They're going to be activated completely, but it's not quite time yet. Mm -hmm. Um, So either that will happen in a med bed or with the solar flash. Yep. Yeah, I get that too. Yeah. 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 We were asking about the solar flash and we got, what did we get? Six months. Yeah, March, April, I get. I get earlier. March, late, late yeah. March. Yeah. Yep. I think that's really, that's what I loved about meeting you, honey, because obviously we was on about this earlier. Like, I do have a lot of confidence in myself, but when I met you and I'm like, oh, I get this. And then you ask, someone asked you a question and I got the answer and you look at me and I was like, oh yeah, we got the same answer. Because it was like that instant download. And obviously I do channel all the time, but when you're not around, like obviously me and Trish channeled together all the time and we always have that feedback, but that's it, it was just us two. So I think having that external validation for the exact same things I was getting channeling and the visions and that instant downloads that we was both getting at the same time, 
you know, I really enjoyed that. It gave me a lot of confirmation on the things that I were getting and the way I were getting it, because I think that's, you know, sometimes I do, I, I do get a lot of vision when I ask for it, but I get a lot of just information downloaded in. Yeah, yeah so, we'll apologise now for keep messaging you. I like confirmation too it's great because I get a lot of information and sometimes I'm like am I skewing that at all am I understanding right, that's me. You know? yeah. yeah there's no bias and I almost think I think any person in this industry in this whatever you want to call it this life if you have a certain point of channeling there is a point where you question it you question yourself you question all of it like I'm not saying all the time maybe just one time mainly just one time for me but mm -hmm. you have that questioning of you know I do watch for example like your stuff little tinkerbell I do watch your stuff and Mark's stuff and you know I've watched other people in the past and then you think to yourself am I you know that's only recently watching you guys but am I biased from past stuff or or past historical information or anything like that and then have to have someone else just ask one question and then have that instant resonation re resonation whatever the word is resonance that's it you know connection that that meant a lot to me and I think it meant a lot in in confirming my own abilities and confirming that the things that Trish seen years ago you explained a lot of that and because she's shit at explaining she'll get a vision and she's like oh I get well, this as well as <laughs> I'm like, I don't, we don't understand well, I did not understand a lot of things yeah and I you know <laughs> When I went online, so I only ever went online through lockdown. Never, it didn't really interest me before. I pushed to do it, and um, there was so much information that were like, ah, mm. so that's what that meant. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you should have a vision. <clears throat> I mean, one of the main ones were like the. She kept saying, "I mean, New York's empty," and I was like, "Listen, New York never sleeps. It's not going to shut. It's not happening, mate. Don't shut down. There's no chance there's going to be lights off and no cars. It's just not happening." And then obviously lockdown came and I was like, oh, I get it now. So, mm -hmm. you know, the visions, I should explain it to me. I was like, yeah, but it don't make sense. You know, one that I didn't believe, it, I just didn't understand. Right, so everybody put, just puts their little pieces. Right. Yeah, everybody has a perspective and it comes through. And that's why your higher self like feeds you stuff right. at the rate you can handle it. It's only in your highest good. So I couldn't get the same thing explained in exactly the same way as somebody else because it's not the right perception personal interpretation as well and yeah. I think in in 2019 and 2020 there was a lot of time lapping at time timelines overlapping so I think like I was tapping in one timeline she was tapping in another timeline and we're like yeah but I see this and she see this and it was like we was both aligning to different timelines and seeing different visions yeah. not neither was wrong it was just multiple different things were going on and there was no set timeline at that time to where and which direction we were going in which is why we were getting the mixture of visions but that's what's great about it is I we we were on about this the other day after coming back from Morocco I had a lot of gratitude for Trish because not a lot of people have that someone that they can just talk so comfortably and openly and just be like oh I've seen this today about this and what's this and the the white ones are saying this and I feel like we need to go over there and close a portal like you can't really do that with normal people and I think that's something I did realize that, you know, it's about us being able to be a little bit more confident and be a little bit more stepping in as power so that other people can feel more confident and step in their power. And then they're inspiring other people yeah. to do the same thing. Like that's the whole point. And it is scary. We still get anxiety and fears and, you know, no one's, I think, bypasses it. We still experience it and you just don't hold on to it. You just got to kind of let it ride and remember what the bigger mission is, you know? Mm -hmm. There was always a knowing that we was here to do something more something bigger than just go yeah, to school and go know, and get a you job lot and remind down. us yeah of the mission yeah. if you like mm -hmm. well we all remind each other and yeah. i really love having like the whatsapp groups and the telegram groups because for me it makes me feel connected to the work so instead of it just being like oh, i don't know what to do like i'll have to ask myself and sit there and channel in like well, someone sends a message in the group can we send healing to the collective and the white hat and i'm like right cool so it's like almost like mission instructions and it's like having other people now on the team that it doesn't feel like we're just doing this on a zone now yeah you know we're all like collecting, right? yeah. so it's we're, like we're bouncing together. things off of each other so before we stop this video i want to mm -hmm. make sure we talk about how you're going to go forward with your voice pretty soon because we're going to mm -hmm. put your information below and she's going to be doing a really cool project so 
talk about that. Yeah, so it's 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 one that do you know what? I'll be honest, it gives me anxiety more than anything on there because with spirituality, I'm really comfortable about talking about it. And if I'm like in a music, oh, the dog's having a little choke. Throat chakra's clearing the dog right now. The, the dog's taking my throat chakra blockage. Okay, um, yeah. So it's one of them things where. I separated it for a long time in my life and I became a singer long before I claimed as a spiritualist I was always very open as a child but no label on it you know and yeah I think it's time for me to not separate them anymore most people that know me on a personal level know that I sing because I don't stop singing usually just lie around the house and forget I'm doing it but I suppose not a lot of people in the professional world do know that uh, or they don't have that much experience with that. And I try not to be someone, as we were talking about earlier, you know, my soul is very old and I do feel very tapped into multiple different, you know, I'm a singer, a dancer, an artist, a paint, I create jewellery, I write books, I create decks of cards, I do mm-hmm. sessions and, try, and literally the list just, and that I'm now just starting to learn the keyboard and other things. I'm like, oh, what else can I do? And I just don't stop. And now I'm wanting to write an album and create the the spiritual, like the message that I feel like I need to get out instead of just doing one-to-one sessions and even group sessions. Like if I can create that into music and yeah. then send that around the world, like that's going to activate so many people's consciousness in such a quicker time. And I think I just needed to have the conscious acknowledgement that I don't need to separate it and it can actually help the spiritual mission so much more than just, because I'm always like, no, I've got this to do, I need to do this, I need, I've got to do the energy work, I've got to do the meditation, I've got to help people activate. And I think I realised lately in the past couple of weeks, why can't I just do both together? Why can't I activate people on that higher level with yeah. music? And, you know, I, I think... I really needed to fall back in love with it again and claim singing for me because, you know, sometimes in my life I felt like maybe I didn't want to sing and, you know, because there was such a, a, like, there's love and support, but kind of out of my control a little bit sometimes. So I think having the choice to do it now and choosing to want to reconnect with that, that's a big thing for me. And, yeah, you know, I do have some some of my singing videos, quite nice because I've been watching my journey on my own personal YouTube they start when I was like 11, 12, and they just go up on the years. And there's like a gap between like 19 and 22, but there's still, it's like watching the years of development and I can watch it with such love now. Like I used to be really self-critical and really self-judgment. And I watch it with such love and reflection of the journey. And I am really excited to see where we can connect these two together and and how that's going to go. I just need to make time to write the album, write a new book, make some more cards. Well, just sing, sing. Get started right. singing and talking and uh, we'll put where you're going to be doing that below so that yeah. you can share it with the world because frequency comes in color and sound. And right. I think that frequency or energy is like the future of how we're going to do everything. So true. So, so true. I'm really excited to see what you do. Yeah, so- I- your voice makes me cry. It makes everyone. It makes fifty-year-old men cry. I, I pride myself in knowing I can make big burly men cry. It's just one of my oh, many yeah. things. <laughs> beautiful. No, well, but it, this feeling. is beautiful. This is no, it has, it's been beautiful. And thank you so much, Ronnie. I am so grateful to have met you. I know we've known each other before because yeah. when I met you, I was like, that's my girl. And do you know how yeah, how magical as well? Very quick because I know we're out of time. But that picture that me and you took oh my god at that pool like me and honey met for the first time and I was really like in my anxiety mode <sighs> I'm in a meltdown I'm like I'm just not growing up I was just yeah. like, right away and honey was just there talking to me and we looked and the reflection in the pool of the lights and the oh that water like we'll have to link them the picture because oh my god it was it was such an example of our worlds blurred and blending into yeah. one and like the picture coming into the whole picture and I'm just so grateful to have met you and have this journey and I can't wait to see where we work together in the future and collaborate because it's fucking awesome knowing you and having you around and in my life I love it so I'm excited to see where this goes it's gonna be great it's gonna be great and it yeah. was there was a reason that we came together so I look forward to the future with all of us. Me yeah. Too. Thank That's you. It. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. You, sweet. Bye.